In this video, I'm going to provide an introduction to probability. So what is probability? Generally, probability refers to the chance of an event occurring. What that event is, of course, is up to you, but no less, probability can help us in decision making about the possible outcomes about whether an event will occur or not. In statistics, probability refers to a numerical value between zero and one. The value of that prob probability takes on is infinite. It can take on an infinite number of values between zero and one. It just must be bounded between the values of zero and one. So what that means is that a probability of negative 0.25 doesn't make any sense, and a probability of 1.25 also doesn't make any sense. So let's first talk about what does a probability of zero equate to? Well, a probability of zero refers to a situation where an event will never occur. It is impossible for that event to occur. There is no chance that that event will occur. So a good example of an event that will never occur is I will never see a dodo walking down a street. So if we wanted to ask ourselves, what is the probability that I go for a walk and see a dodo bird? The probability would be zero. How do we know that? Well, dodo birds are extinct. That means there are none left in the world, which means that if I go for a walk, the probability I see a dodo bird will be zero. Alternatively, what's an example of a probability when it is one? So a probability of one means with absolute certainty, every single time without fail, this event will occur. So very few instances are absolutely certain in life, but what's one absolutely certain event? Assuming that the world keeps spinning on its axis, tomorrow morning the sun will come up, right? And it will, and by come up, it will just come into view, right? It may be blocked by the clouds, or it may be snowing, or there may be smog where you are, but no less the sun would be in a visible spot had there not been those clouds, okay? So with a probability of one, the sun will come up tomorrow. Now, before we go any further, there are a number of concepts and rules that we have to think about when we learn probability, but let's first talk about two general rules. The first being the probability assignment rule, and then the second being the complement rule. So for the probability assignment rule, all this says is that all events must add up to one. So what does that mean? Well, practically speaking, it means that all possible outcomes of a particular scenario, their probabilities must sum up to one. So let's take the game of chess as an example. If you were playing the game of chess, what are the possible outcomes? Well, you're either going to win, so we have the probability of winning. You're going to lose. Or you're going to draw. Right? Each one of these probabilities may have a different numerical value or a different weight, but no less, all three of these outcomes will sum to one because those are the only three outcomes that can happen. You can either win, lose, or draw in chess. There is no fourth option. So the sum of those probabilities will add to one. The complement rule is the probabil probability in an event occurring is relative to the probability that the event does not occur. So we read this as the probability of event A, the probability of A is equal to one minus the probability of A complement, right? That's what we refer to here when we see A with a superscript C, that's just a complement or the opposite of event A. So in our game of chess, if we wanted to take the probability that we win, well, using the complement rule, we can solve for this, and that's the one minus the probability that we don't win, right? Included in the probability of we don't win uh, is the probability that we draw, right? Because all we're interested in is the probability that we win, there is of course the possibility that we would draw. So one minus the probability that we lose minus the probability that we draw. And that is how we use the complement rule in the very simple scenario of playing a game of chess. There are also a couple other things I'd like to talk about. There are disjoint events and independent events. So let's talk about what is a disjoint event. A disjoint event are two events that cannot happen at the same time. In statistical language, we write this as the probability of A and B is equal to zero, right? So this whole term here that and meaning that they occur at the same time, events A and B. So the probability that they occurred together is equal to zero, meaning it does not happen. So what's an example of a disjoint event? Well, you can think of a disjoint event as putting on your socks in the morning and specifically which sock you put on first. You can't put both socks on at the same time. That doesn't work. You have to pick either your left sock or your right sock to put on first. Okay, so if you will 
draw an example of that in a second. But if you think about it, you're either putting your left sock, sock on first or your right sock on first, but you're not putting both on together. So the probability that you put your left sock and right sock on together would be equal to zero. When we write our probability equation here, our probability of A or B, so our probability of left sock or right sock first, is simply equal, equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. So we can also write this as the probability of left or right, just relative to our sock question, is equal to the probability of left plus the probability of right. Okay. When we talk about independent events, because that's another concept that we talk about a lot, to, when we refer to independent events, we're really referring to two processes that are independent and we know they're independent if the outcome of one provides no useful information about the outcome of another. We write this in statistical language as the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. This little vertical line here, that's when we say given, so the probability of A given B, so the probability of A given we know some piece of information about, about the event B, the probability of A remains the same, meaning that the probability of A remains unchanged even when we know a piece of information about B. So what's a good example of two independent events? Well, let's take the probability of you watching this video. So the probability of you watching this video is independent of the knowledge that I just had a grilled cheese sandwich for lunch. So knowing that I had a grilled cheese sandwich for lunch, it should not change your probability that you watch this video other than you may be more inclined to watch more videos knowing that I'm a uh, I have I enjoy eating the occasional grilled cheese but either way knowing that I had a grilled cheese does not inform your probability of watching this video it does not change so those would be an exact that's an example of two independent events for those of us who are more visually inclined let's visualize what a disjoint event looks like so here's what a disjoint event looks like we have two events we have event a and event B and if we want to go back to our sock example, we have our left sock and we have our right sock. And what do we notice about these two circles? Well, there is no instance where they overlap, right? They are completely disjoint from each other. There's no instance where the two overlap. So the probability of A and B or the probability of left and right, that is when they occur at the same time, is equal to zero. There's no overlap here. The probability that A and B occur together is zero. If we were interested in when is uh, the probability of A or B, so the probability that we put our left sock on first or our right sock on first, simply equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. So we've talked about disjoint events, but what about non-disjoint events? So non-disjoint events are is simply the scenario where we have where we have two events that occur and there's some overlap between them. So as you can see in this Venn diagram, we have a scenario where event A and event B occur at the same time. So in this scenario, the probability of A and B does not equal zero, right? There's an, there's an instance where event A and event B occurs together. And to find the probability of event A or B, it's simply equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, which is this shaded region here. So from a practical example point, let's look at this. Let's think about your morning coffee, and let's assume that you put something in your morning coffee and you either put milk or you put sugar. And there are some instances where you will put both milk and sugar. The instance where you put both milk and sugar is equivalent to the probability of A and B. If you just put milk, it's the probability of A. If you just put sugar, it's the probability of B. If you put milk and sugar, it's the probability of milk and sugar together. For those who just want to skip right to the equations, that's okay. So here's our general addition rule for non-disjoint events. So when we have non-disjoint events, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And just a visual reminder, as we have the luxury of doing so, our non-disjoint events is where we have this little area of overlap between events A and events B, 
and the probability of A and B is equal to this shaded region. For disjoint events, our probability of A or B is simply equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. So reminder, our disjoint events look like this. There's no moment of overlap where these events occur at the same time. So our general addition rule for disjoint events is simply equal to the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now, we've talked about disjoint events and we've talked about complementary events, but there is an important differentiation between the two, and that is that disjoint events aren't always complementary, meaning that the sum of their probabilities don't always add up to one. So if we take the example of which sock do you put on first in the morning, your left sock or your right sock, there's a chance that that probability won't add up to one. And why wouldn't it add up to one? Well, perhaps you aren't wearing socks that day. So you're not putting your left sock on or your right sock on first. You're simply not wearing socks. Perhaps you're wearing sandals for the rest of the day. So in that instance, that's an example of two disjoint events, your left sock or your right sock, that don't add up to one. Uh, there may be an instance where you just don't put socks on at all. So this would be a disjoint event, but they're not necessarily complementary. A complementary event are two mutually exclusive events whose probability add up to one. And in complementary events, they are always disjoint. So meaning that the two don't happen at the same time. So let's take a very simple game, whatever it may be you choose, but let's say you can either win or lose, right? So in this case, the, the probability of win plus the probability of lose is equal to one. So these are complementary events, they're disjoint. <clears throat> so then to calculate the probability that we win is equal to one minus the probability that we lose. And alternatively, if we wanted to calculate the probability that we lose, it's equal to one minus the probability that we win. And then finally, we can talk about the multiplication rule, and this is for independent events. So just a refresher, when we talked about independent events, it was the probability of you watching this video and the probability of me having just eaten a grilled cheese sandwich. So the probability of you watching the video and me having eaten a grilled cheese sandwich would just be equal to the probability of you watching the video times the probability of me having eaten a grilled cheese sandwich. And this would be the probability that these two events occur at the same time. So the best way to learn, in my opinion, is to do a practice problem. So let's go ahead and do a practice problem together. So here's our, here's our problem. So you and your friend decide to get your cars inspected. You're informed that 75% of cars pass inf inspection. In the event of your cars passing is independent of your friend's cars passing, what is the probability that your car passes inspection? Okay, so let's go ahead and start to solve this problem. So we're gonna label this A and we're interested in the probability that our car passes. So what we're interested in is the probability of a pass. And this is given to us in the question as 0.75. Now, how do we know this? Let's just look at our question here. It's saying that we're informed that 75% of cars pass inspection. So the probability of pass is equal to 0 0.75. What about B? So the Question B reads, what is the probability that our car does not pass inspection? So the probability of a not pass is equal to one minus the probability of a pass, right? They're complements of each other. Assuming that you can either pass or fail, there's nowhere in between, they're complements of each other. So this is equal to one minus 0 0.75, which is equal to 0 0.25. Okay, question C, what is the probability that both cars pass? So C, so we're asking what is the probability that we have two cars pass? We're also told in the question that cars passing is independent of our friend's car. So there's a good hint that we're gonna use our multiplication rule. So in this case, we're just going to take the probability uh, first car passes
times the probability of a second car pass. which is equal to 0 0.75 times 0 0.75, which is also equal to 0 0.75 to the power of 2, which is equal to 0 0.5625. Question D is, what is the probability that at least one of the two cars passes inspection? So, okay, so D, the probability of greater than or equal to one car, one car passing. Well, another way of thinking of this is it means that both cars didn't fail is equal to one minus the probability that both cars fail or which is equal to one minus the probability of not pass to the power of two, which is equal to one minus 0 0.25 to the power of two, which is equal to one minus 0 0.0625 and this brings up our final answer of 0 0.9375. So in conclusion, we have used probability to answer this question. So what is the probability of at least one of the two cars passing? Well, the probability of at least one of the two cars passing would be one minus the probability that both cars fail, which is one minus the probability of not pass to the power of two. We follow our order of operations and we arrive at our final answer. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.